Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. The Tampa Bay Lightning desperately needed a win and they got it to tie the series at two. The LA Angels are mired in a long losing streak and have decided that it was time for Joe Madden to go. And the Deshaun Watson story feels like it has hit a fever pitch. How did we get here? I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. In some ways, it had been a bit of a surprising 2-1 series lead the New York Rangers held heading into Game 4 of their series with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And in Game 4, we saw why that might have been surprising to at least some people. A 4-1 win for Tampa Bay as they even the series at two games apiece. Joining me now from Locked on Rangers, John Chick. And John, um, this has been a, a series where every game has felt very self-contained where a game happens and it's like, okay, this team is going to, is going to ride this momentum the next game. And then eh, we don't really see that. So what changed in, in game four? Well, first of all, Peter, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's how I felt for this entire New York Ranger postseason run here, where every game is its own self-contained thing. You know, you go back to the Pittsburgh series, they're getting killed in games three and four, and they rally out of that three, one hole. And then uh, Carolina, whichever team was at home, uh, you know, won won that game, that entire series until the Rangers won game seven. As far as what was different tonight, I think you saw a very clear cut case of one team that looked like the team that was down two games to one and desperately needed to win this game. If you watch this game, uh, you know, the Tampa Bay pretty much won all the 50, 50 pucks. They won all the board battles. They had the edge overall in the special teams department and they outchanced the Rangers. The Rangers just couldn't get anything going offensively. You got to tip your cap a little bit to what Tampa Bay did. Uh, it's funny though. You know, I just did my locked on now and I mentioned that, you know, as good as Andre Vasilevsky was in this game. And of course he's a world-class goalie. I didn't think he really factored into the outcome that much. It was more just a fact of Tampa Bay playing suffocating defense and uh, no odd man rushes the entire night for the Rangers and no power play opportunities until about midway through the third period there. So it all added up to a rough loss, but I'm still very hopeful. You know, they're going home for game five and they've been excellent at home uh, throughout this postseason run here so far. It also should be noted. This was a two nothing game after two periods. So it wasn't like Tampa controlled this and was blowing this team out from start to finish. It was it was two goals in the third period that separated them. That was also when the Rangers got their lone goal. So when when we talked to you a, a couple games ago, you men- mentioned the ferocity that the Rangers played with, the energy that they played with. Now now it's a best of three. So there can be no games where you don't, you are short on energy, where you have these lulls. So if it's not going to be that, both teams we expect to come out like like a house of fire these next three games. If it's not going to be that energy, what can you attribute to wins that you that you think the Rangers could get? Well, as far as what they need to do in this game, I think you just got to get back to the basics and just start putting the puck at the net, you know, like they were doing earlier in this series. You know, that's when they've been successful in the playoffs is taking their shots when they get the opportunities, getting pucks deep, you know, just basically all the hockey cliches and uh, hopefully just get a little bit more going offensively. You can draw some penalties and get a couple of power play opportunities. The Rangers have been so good on the power play really the entire season and certainly in the postseason as well. So I think special teams battles are are still going to be very, very big the rest of the way in this series. Uh, And the Rangers just need to feed off of that hometown crowd and once again, play with that kind of desperation that we saw them play with, uh, you know, at various parts of this postseason, but maybe not quite as much in this game here tonight. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. We have an important favor to ask you. We put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is an opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of ten hundred dollars Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. Coming up, the LA Angels were a first-month darling that have since fallen from the heavens so hard they decided they no longer wanted Joe Madden managing the team. Here's what to look for on Bet Online, your number one spot for all your daily gambling needs. How about some props for Game Three of the NBA Finals? You can bet on whether the first shot will be a three-pointer. Bet Online has the odds at plus one forty, and they have the largest lead 
At 17 and a half, they have minus 137 on the under there, plus the team to score last. Same odds no matter which team you pick. Minus 114, Celtics and Warriors. Bet online where the game starts. Star wide receiver DK Metcalf was not present Tuesday for the start of the Seattle Seahawks three-day mandatory minicamp. Metcalf's absence is unexcused, according to reports, meaning he's subject to team fines that would total more than $93,000 if he were to miss all three days. Metcalf is seeking an extension to his rookie contract and also recovering from surgery for the foot injury he played through much of last season. This could be a sign that those talks of a contract extension aren't progressing how he'd like as he was present for portions of the voluntary offseason workouts. The Seahawks don't typically get big budget extensions done until training camp and have expressed interest in extending Metcalf, but GM John Schneider was notably shocked by the offseason skyrocketing wide receiver market. Guys like Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, they were out the door because of those high costs. Free agent quarterback Cam Newton wants everyone to know he's still got it, and his tenure with the Carolina Panthers last year was just a case of wrong place, wrong time. I signed on Thursday. I played on Sunday, the 2015 NFL MVP said on the Pivot Podcast. So before I sit up here and allow the narrative to be made that Cam ain't got it no more, Cam is taking full responsibility and saying Cam put himself in a up situation, which then had a ricochet effect to people thinking how they think of me. Newton, who is 33 years old, repeatedly said, there's not 32 guys better than me. And certainly not 32 guys better than him at using himself in the third person. Peter really appreciates that one. The USG announced Tuesday that all players who have qualified for the U.S. Open are welcome at the U.S. Open. The USGA asked themselves if the players who qualified but chose to play another event should be pulled from the Open, and they ultimately decided... That was not the right course of action. What sets the second oldest championship in golf apart from the others is that none of the other four majors has criteria in place that forces roughly 50% of the field to go through 36-hole qualifying. And on the diamond, the Cincinnati Reds allowed eight runs after a rain delay and still beat the Arizona Diamondbacks by six. Well, that certainly took long enough. And was it ever really in doubt? I mean, the Cincinnati Reds, for the second night in a row, put together a beautifully complete performance to defeat the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hey, this is Jeff Carr from the Locked On Reds podcast, here to tell you about another great day at the ballpark for the Cincinnati Reds. The weather didn't cooperate, and this time they didn't decide to call the game early, and they came back. And they played the 8th inning, and they played the top of the ninth inning. They scored a bunch more runs, and it didn't matter because the Reds still had way more runs than the Diamondbacks did. But it all started with Graham Ashcraft. Six shutout innings, beautiful baseball pitch. That's now back-to-back starts that rookie Reds pitchers have pitched shutout performances. That's 13 innings, if you're counting, from Hunter Green and Graham Ashcraft of no runs allowed whatsoever. Beautiful performance by him. Happy to see that the lineup continued its dominance. A great three-run blast from Joseph Daniel Votto. And Brandon Drury with another home run. Is Brandon Drury playing himself onto this roster for a longer period than just this year? Might be a little bit premature to be saying such things, but he's been a nice fill-in for an otherwise binged-up Reds lineup. We're going to talk about that and more on tomorrow's Locked On Reds podcast. Steve is back, so make sure you are too. Two weeks ago, the LA Angels were 27-17 and and probably feeling pretty good about themselves. Two weeks later, 27-29 and on a Tuesday, firing their manager, Joe Madden. Things went aggressive in a hurry joining me now from locked on angels it is john frisch john uh the the question i think that we have to ask is how much of this move was predicated on the idea of this is joe madden's fault versus just this looks bad yeah i think that you could probably put 85 percent of the blame on joe madden okay. and i've watched as a fan, I'm a very dedicated fan. I've watched every game, and I cannot tell you how much uh, my brother, who co-hosts Locked On Angels with me, and I have been frustrated with some of the moves that he's made in the last few weeks, and and even back to when they were doing really well. And that includes bullpen overthinking, mismanagement, 
uh, when they're going through this slump, not moving anybody around in that lineup. Look, there were a couple times over this 0-12 stretch where the Angels were within one run. They had a lead sometimes. And some decisions that Joe Madden made kind of cost the Angels. And, you know, the difference between a 4-8 and eight stretch and an 0-12 stretch, apparently, <laughs> is your job. Because that's, that's what ended up happening. <laughs> I think the other part of this is managers on bad teams, or at least teams with no talent, tend to at least stay employed a little bit mm -hmm. um, just because they're bad and the team mm -hmm. is bad and everyone knows that they're bad. And then a certain, there's a certain level of losing where you go, okay, we just have to, we have to start over to me. Joe Madden is not the manager anymore because of Mike Trout, because of Shohei Otani, because this is a roster that we saw for two and a half months be really good. We know they have this talent. They should not lose 12 games in a row. My question to you, and, and this is a difficult one, is how does a team with this much talent lose 12 games in a row? Yeah, I think it goes back to some of his decision-making. When, when you have a guy like Mike Trout struggling, there's no reason why you don't try to plug him in the leadoff spot and see how that goes. Get him a few reps. See if he can break out of this slump. Put Shohei behind him and give him some protection rather than have Shohei in front of him. Look, uh, Joe Madden didn't really move much of the lineup around at all, if, if any. And the other part of that is we had Joe Adele come up as a necessary move to replace Taylor Ward, who's hurt right now. And Anthony Rendon's hurt right now, too. But that wasn't a move because it was like, hey, let's get a spark on this team. It was, a, oh, we need another right fielder. Let's bring up Joe Adele. And I don't think that's the right attitude. I think that you you try to do everything that you can to light a fire under this team. And, and to me, sitting from my podcast chair, it just looked like Joe Madden kind of sat on his hands through this whole struggle. I appreciate you using the word hands and not another word that you could have used, which I think would have <laughs> driven home the same kind of point. Um, we're, a, we're, we're a family show on Locked on Angels. 100% <laughs> Locked on Sports today. Same thing. How does this change the way that you think the Angels approach the rest of the season? Because there could still be opportunities for them to, to make some changes to this team if they want to try and make a playoff push. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're in a great position going, going from, second place in the AL West and, and having a wild card spot. Look, we, we all thought that with that opening of the third wild card spot, that this was our year. And it started out looking like that. Um, I think that they rode that momentum for as long as they can, could. And, and a lot of people were like, look how good the angels are. They're up there with the Astros and the Dodgers and the Yankees and da da da. And now that the pressure is gone, now that we've totally fallen over our feet, <laughs> I think that some of the stress of living up to that hype, has gone away, and I hope that the guy, these guys can just kind of focus on getting back to fundamental baseball that they were playing, uh, you know, for the first two months of this season. I think now is the time to make this change because they're only a game and a half, or uh, maybe a half game out of the third wild card spot right now behind Boston, who they're playing. And I think that if they had held on to Joe Madden any longer, I think that could have done some damage. So I, I understand the, the notion to rip it off like a Band-Aid and, and move forward. And I personally am glad that they did that because I've watched a lot of Angel teams hang on as desperately as they can to talent or staff or <laughs> whoever you can name for way too long. So I appreciate that Perry Manassian has made the difficult decisions. And, and so far it's paid off. He let Albert Pujols go last year. He let Justin Upton go this year. And it was Joe's time. I think it was time for him to go. Coming up, the cards are stacking against Deshaun Watson. How did we get here and where do we go from here? Don't you love a chewy chocolatey brownie? What about a caramel brownie with that swirl on it? If you're thinking about all the words you might use to describe that thing, healthy, probably not one of them. Protein, probably not another word that would come to your mind. But Built has done it. The caramel brownie bar is back at Built.com. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and just four grams of sugar covered in 100% real chocolate. I don't understand the sorcery behind it, but they do it with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently. With Built, Tasty is the new healthy. Go to Built.com to get your box of caramel brownie bars now. Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. 
New reporting from the New York Times on Tuesday revealed disturbing new details in the ongoing sexual assault cases against Cleveland quarterback Deshaun Watson. Another woman added herself to the 23 others accusing Watson of sexual misconduct during massages. The report by Jenny Vrentis, who was the first to publish firsthand accounts from the victims last year, detailed 66 different women Watson contacted for massages over 17 months following a similar pattern of behavior to convince them to work with him, even purporting to be championing black-owned businesses. The reports from even more women who did not join the civil lawsuits pending against Watson detailed graphic encounters where the quarterback insisted on sexual contact, requested oral sex, and gratified himself in front of these women without consent. After the story was published, Deshaun Watson took to Instagram, quoting from Lil Baby, See, the blogs can't break me. See, I'm the voice. I don't reply, but the rumors y'all done heard. I'm a humbly deny. But here's something we can't deny at this point. It's beyond time for the NFL to act. The commissioner's exempt list at a minimum makes sense, as it was designed specifically for these kinds of situations. Allowing this to drag on only serves to shine bright lights on the failings around the league, not just on Watson himself. On the other hand... I welcome that spotlight, the kind required to hold accountable those who acquiesced or at worst facilitated these encounters. The Texans reportedly provided space and equipment. The Cleveland Browns allegedly investigated these allegations, signed Watson to the biggest deal in NFL history with historic guarantees, and structured it so Watson would lose the least amount of money in year one if he suspended in an act so craven and so unconscionable it's hard to even fully comprehend. Deshaun Watson should not set foot on an NFL field again. And not just because I think the NFL should suspend him indefinitely, though I think they should, but because no NFL team should countenance employing him. This is the same league that refused to sign Colin Kaepernick because of a peaceful protest. The sad reality is the Browns knew the truth. Once Watson was throwing touchdowns again, fans would forgive or at least willfully forget about these allegations. That's the difference between Watson and Kaepernick that matters to the Browns. One is a potential all-pro player and the other, even four or five years ago, was likely a backup. This is sports, but no one wins in this story. The Texans lose the face of their franchise. The Browns invest in one despite a lurid and ongoing investigation into sexual predation. The alleged victims whose stories are being told must relive the trauma they've endured. All while fans and even some media look the other way, revealing a truth we too often like to ignore. We don't treat football players like people. They're commodities, names on a fantasy team. Ironically, we treat them the way Watson is alleged to have treated these women, like objects, worthy only of selfish gratification. This is one of those sports stories in which everyone loses. And finally, Aaron Rodgers will play the rest of his career with the Green Bay Packers, at least according to Aaron Rodgers. In response to whether he would finish his career with the only NFL team he has ever played for, Rodgers simply said, yes, definitely. Just, just me smiling for no reason in particular. Just happy. Just smiling. Thanks for making Locked On Sports your first listen. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NBA. From the first jump ball, the play-in tournament, to the last possession of the finals, Locked On experts take you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Coming up Thursday, who will take the next advantage in the NBA finals? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today.